Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Greetings, everybody. I'm going to be doing another podcast on the sciences. This was from a couple of years ago. I saw a really fascinating article. I put it down on my notepad and I just got back to it. It's about gay couples having biological kids. So the implications of this are far-reaching, they're fascinating, it brings up so many questions, and it's just amazing what they're doing. So the article says, gay couples may soon be able to have their own biological kids. Human egg cells can now be created from donor blood. A Brave New World is Upon Us by Scotty Hendricks. Like I said, it was a couple of years ago. And what I plan to do is, before I publish this, I'm going to try to do a a deep dive again and see if in the last year and a half or so, is there any more news? Is there any more progress? So this will give me incentive to do that. The, to- uh, the talking points or the topics are, Japanese scientists have successfully created immature human egg cells using stem cells. The discovery builds on years of research into the uses of stem cells. While the prospects for new fertility treatments are promising, the ethical questions raised by the procedure will have to be answered. And these are the things that are the important questions of today. Science will always bring up these type of things, and I think it's a great thing to talk about, to understand Um, do deep dives on because these are the things that are going to matter in the future we are not going to be able to ignore and persecute minorities and this is where the future is going to lie for some people and I think this is something really interesting and a philosophy type thing that is you know you got to wrap your head around what are the consequences of something like this so I'll continue Japanese scientists have changed blood cells into stem cells, which were then used to create immature human egg cells. While the new eggs are too immature to be of any use, the study, published on September 20 in Science, points to the way to new fertility treatments as well as ethical concerns that are unlike anything we've encountered before. And there are links there. And, you know, how do they do it? The scientists took human blood cells and used a previously known method to transform them into human pluripotent stem cells, HPSCs. These cells can be changed into any other cell, making them extremely useful in medical research and giving them endless potential for future treatments. Right there, this is amazing. We're 15 to 20 years behind on this, which is a shame. There's a lawsuit, I think, about how the religious right and the government, you know, forestalled cures and breakthroughs and did a lot of damage. I'll continue. While previous studies have attempted to create lab-grown human eggs from stem cells before, those attempts were all unsuccessful. The trick, it seems, was to put the new egg cells into a miniature ovary built for this task out of cells taken from mice. This allowed the scientists to succeed where others have failed. Wow. All right, so what can we do with this? While the eggs produced in this study are immature and incapable of doing anything, there is reason to hope that over the long run, fully functional eggs will be created. This has already been done for mice. Although making that work for human cells will be a little bit more difficult. There are links here. So when I post a link in the descriptions, you'll be able to go through it, do deep dives. Artificially created mature human egg cells could be used in a variety of fertility treatments. They could be produced for those born infertile, people who have lost their fertility due to illness, or even for gay couples who want to have children with their own genetic makeup and not that of a donor. On a more mundane level, mature eggs could be created on demand for research purposes. This is, this is insane, but in a great way, it's a little scary, but 
you know, we have to embrace the future and we have to get ahead of these concerns. I think this is amazing. The study author stated that the next step for them will be to try and produce mature eggs and sperm cells that could actually be used for reproduction. It may be only a matter of time before fully functioning lab-grown human gametes are a reality. Now, this is mind-blowing in a, in a certain way, but think of what this could mean for people. And, and yes, I believe there should be adoption and, you know, I wish every kid had a home, but there are couples out there, and like it said, infertile for many reasons, or gay couples. I think this would be such a great uh, breakthrough. This process currently allows immature eggs to be created that have the DNA of the blood cell donor. If the procedure is perfected and mature sperm and eggs can be produced, a brave new world of genetic selection may be upon us. One in which desirable DNA can be bought and sold to create gametes with desirable genetic qualities. Ronald Green, a Dartmouth bio bioethicist who often works on issues related to stem cells, explains one of the many strange possibilities we may soon face. And, you know, this is crazy. All right. Quotes, a woman might want to have George Clooney's baby and his hairdresser could start selling his hair follicles online. So we suddenly could see many, many progeny of George Clooney without his consent. <laughs> it's pretty crazy, but yeah, you could see the potential for this, right? It's just, it's just crazy and wonderful at the same time. In addition to the possibility of genetic theft, the ability for any person to have their cells turned into eggs, which could lead to a successful birth, allows for the creation of children from the cells of the recently deceased. A creepy situation that we will undoubtedly have to reckon with. <laughs> Just picture what that means. Taking cells from deceased people and creating stem cell and eggs from it. It's just mind-blowing. Wow. I'll continue again. People in need of new organs might see fit to have a child created with the DNA to provide a spare kidney a few years down the road. This is already happening in the form of ethically ambiguous savior siblings and was explored in the book and film My Sister's Keeper. <laughs> That's just, just... Oh boy, humans. Incredible. And was explored in the book and film My Sister's Keeper with a... With a Morality of child creation be any different if the child is tailor-made for the person in need of a donor rather than the old-fashioned way? This is so right up religious rights alley. This is amazing. People in need of new organs might see fit to have a child created with the... Oh, I did this already, right? <laughs> oh, boy. All right. We must begin asking ourselves now how we will react to these ethical questions since the science won't slow down for us. And there you go. So my blub at the end flubbed over an important part that ends the article, which is, I'll repeat, we must begin asking ourselves now, how will we, how will we, we react to those ethical questions since the science won't slow down for us? And this is just, you know, you don't stop these type of things. They're going to happen. I think for the most part, it's always good. Yes, you'll get bad people doing bad things with information. I get the weighing of the, you know, options, what might have to be implemented before this goes, uh, you know, gains a consensus and is a procedure. But I think it could make a lot of people happy. It could lead to other breakthroughs. Now, the ethical questions get really deep. But I see it happens now with us as humans. We either evolve and, and die, and both at the same time. So this isn't a fast thing that happens, but technology and science is not, as it says, slowing down. We need to grapple with these things. I think this is an amazing breakthrough, but it does have serious questions to ponder and uh, pontificate and philosophize about. There is... 
a couple of breakthroughs, and I think someone got arrested in one of these other countries for altering someone with, uh, I think it's the CRISPR. Um, I'd have to do a deep dive on that. But there are already things going on that are connected to this in some way, and the ethical uh, dilemmas are similar. We're going to have to deal with these things, but I think it's a great breakthrough. I don't think science should slow down. I wish we were more evolved and more better as a species of capable of dealing with these things, especially with just rampant stupidity in this birthing age of the internet. I think there's so much good out there. I think it really outweighs the bad, but it's out there and they get a voice and, you know, I could see anything being used, but I don't think that should be used for bad things and ill intent, but I don't think that should stop anything. I hope to hear some feedback. You know what to do. Check out the playlist on my YouTube channel. I have Discord and you can find me on Facebook. As always, my best to you and yours. I'll talk to you next time.